Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. As you could tell, uh, that was that was filmed quite a while ago. Yeah, your hair was longer. Yeah. Uh, yep. I I I. There, this is real. This is real. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a while ago. But anyways, um, transformations. Hope you learned a lot about that. Uh, we do those back to basics every now and then on different topics. And that's one of them that might come up every now and then. So um, so we have our guest here, Robin Flipsack. She is from the Denver Public Library. How are you Hi. today? Thanks. Thanks for having me. You're doing great. Of course. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, so you work at the Denver Public Library. That's and right. one of the things I think um, reasons why we're having here today is so that we can share some of all of the resources that mm -hmm. are available that I think a lot of us have no idea are there. Right. So what would you say is, let's start with, what would you say is the most valuable resource that uh, the public is probably the most unaware of? Yeah, well everyone thinks books, right, when we think library, but I think the, the most important resource is the staff and mm -hmm. the fact that we love helping our customers and you know people sometimes are kind of nervous and tentative about getting in touch with the library so we want people to know that they can walk into any location and get help from a, a librarian and there are ways to reach us on online that I'm going to show you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of resources that are available to you through our website. You don't even have to go to a library Ooh. to get to the library. So do you have to be a member to access those resources on the web? It's a great question. Um, there are, we, we give cards out to anyone who can prove Colorado address so you don't have to be a Denver resident in order to get a library card. Uh, there's a quick way to, to sign up online, and I'll show you that. And also... Oh, you can get a library card online? You can get a temporary card that'll get you oh. access to all of our digital resources immediately. Okay. And oh. then students should know that if they have a valid My Denver card, that card functions as a library card. So oh. they can do all of the things that they would do with a regular library card with their valid My Denver card. So they might even not even know that they have access to Absolutely. all of these resources right. already. They don't even have to do yeah. anything. That's right. Yeah. So what are the resources that you can access online? Um, yeah. I, well, today I want to show you a couple web. things. One, I want to show you one of our databases, one of our research databases. We have a lot of them, but uh, I'm just going to show you one really easy one that I think will be really helpful to students. Two, a lot of people don't realize this, you can access a librarian online 24 hours a day. And so when, you're, when it's 10 at night and you're in your pajamas and the assignment's due tomorrow, there's a librarian that can help you online. So I want to demonstrate that chat as well. Oh, that is so cool. And then uh, the, um, I want to show you some power searching tips in Google because people think, well, we don't need libraries anymore. We've got <laughs> Google. But you know, the fact that I have a master's degree in information, library and information science means that I'm really good at searching. So I have some things I think we can demonstrate to show you know, students how you can really leverage the power of Google. Oh, I'm going to use these tips too. So Great. awesome. Okay, so do you want to show us? Um, our, can we go to the computer screen right now and yeah, do you want to show us some of those things? Terrific. Okay, so here I am on the library homepage. This is denverlibrary.org. Okay, this is where you want to start. Lots of things you can get at from right from the homepage. One, get a card. That's the first thing I want to point out. If you go in here, you can register for your temporary library card right, on, right away online. Like I said you could also use your, your current card or your <coughs> Denver card, but that's how you would access that. Two, I work at the Central Library. I'm a reference librarian down there. I don't want students to think that you have to come to reference and get, get help from a reference librarian. The expectation should be that you can go into any of our locations and get help. So right here on the side, all of our locations are listed with their hours. And then if you're not really sure what location is near you, you can go to the all locations map and find out and get some help that way, okay? Um, so let me take you to the teen site. If you scroll down just a little bit, right here, teens, that's going to get you to some sort of age-specific resources. So right away here, you can search the catalog. You can search just ebooks. Maybe people don't know that you can get a book right away from, from the website, from ebooks right here, and search that way. So you don't have to actually go into a building to be getting something to read from the library. So you could uh, put it on like a, um, an iPad 
mm -hmm. or a digital book reader and mm -hmm. just like rent it from the library and not even have to step foot into a library. That's right. So and people are paying for their ebooks. They're free and they at don't the even library. <laughs> That's right. That you can get them for free. That's right. And they're compatible mm -hmm. with most devices: Android, iOS, um, you know, Kindle. Um, uh, Barnes and Noble, the Nook. So yeah, you can read it on your PC. So I have wow. a quick, quick question Please. about that um, because I had heard that a while ago yeah. and I thought it was really cool. But how does that work from the library's standpoint? I mean, do you guys have like an unlimited number of eBooks, or is it? Am I am I making a reservation for the popular books? That's right. And waiting. Yeah, okay. just like a physical book, there's mm -hmm. something called digital rights management around around digital books uh -huh. that are published, and we so we buy a certain number of licenses, and we can lend out that number of okay. books at one time. Yeah, so that's why people say, why is that? Why can't I just get this book right now? It's, yeah. it's digital. There's there's some licenses. They would never sell any ebook. That's if you right. Could. That's <laughs> right. How many yeah. digital licenses would you buy for a given book? Um. Boy, that's it depends on the popularity sure. of the book. Yeah, if it's if it's something that's a bestseller, we're going to get more. Mm -hmm. If it's something mm -hmm. that's a little more esoteric or niche, you know, there'll be fewer licenses. Sure, but we're kind of always watching that ratio of how many people need to how many we have. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let's let's take a look at this homework tab here. I'm going to click on homework. All right, so useful to students. You can see we've got a lot of different resources oh, broken wow. out by discipline. So depending on what sort of a course you're looking at, you can go in there and get some resources that would be, um, you know, appropriate for you. Current events, how to find images on the on the net that are copy copyright friendly, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to take you into one particular database today that I think is a, sort of a go-to for students, gets you a lot of great research information. When you have that assignment, that research assignment, and your teacher says, hey, you got to go out and do some biographical research or you know, research this topic, can't be from Wikipedia, maybe your, your teacher says, I don't want you to use internet resources. If you go here into encyclopedias and dictionaries, you can get to what's called the Gale Virtual Reference Library. Now this is a database that um, DPS does not own. So you have to, you could come with your library card and get access to this through our website. So what's Gale Virtual Reference Library? Oh, what I should say first is this is where you will put in your library card number and um, authenticate into the system. Okay. So I'm in. This is a, an, um, a database of encyclopedias, reference books. So great. That's you know what does that mean? They're really sort of specific encyclopedias. So you can get really targeted information depending on what you're searching for. The search I want to do for you today is Jonas Salk. Right there's the the scientist who's kind of responsible for the the development of the polio vaccine. So when I put in Jonas Salk, and um, I get back 248 results. So let's take a look at these. So you can see there's a biographical um, encyclopedia on American lives. Here's a book about infectious diseases, something about microbiology and immunology. Here's even something on primary resources. So a lot of times your, your, your teachers are asking you to find primary resources for a research assignment. You can get to them right here. If we're to go into one of these, um, let's go into the public health, the environmental health uh, encyclopedia, right? So we've got definitions of polio, risk factors, demographics. So we're kind of looking at polio from this public health perspective around the world, okay? Great research tip for you. When you go into one of these databases and you, um, you pull up one of these articles, down at the bottom, you're going to get a bibliography to start. And you can do a, what this kind of a pro tip, librarians call it chaining. When you find a research uh, resource that's really great for you, look and find out what that author used to get to, to get to their research. And you can chain to those resources and fill out your sort of portfolio of the resources you're, you're going to work with. OK, now let's go back up to the top. I tell students all the time, all these databases sort of look different uh, depending on who we buy them from. But you can sort of expect that there's an underlying functionality that, it, that's kind of common to them. For instance, you should expect that you can email this article to yourself. 
you can download it. If I click on download, look, I can save it straight to Google Drive. I know a lot of you and your teachers are using Google Classroom, so you can sign in right here and push these resources to your teacher. Your teacher can log in and push these resources to you. Um, another great thing that is such a time saver, whether it's called Cite It Now or Citation Tools, et cetera, when you click here, Oh my God. I know. That's my favorite. Right? Oh. That's what I hated the most. That's you the know, least favorite part. Going back mm -hmm. and being like, no, I have to make a bibliography. <laughs> oh. Right. So, yes, yeah, so you can great. see different citation styles. So, it's just a simple copy paste into your bibliography at that point. Oh my gosh. Right? It's terrific. That is really great. Yeah. This is so much more efficient. I remember uh, when I had to do research papers in middle school. And having to go through like who has the M through N encyclopedia, right. yes. and then having to like photocopy it, yes. and like copy everything mm -hmm. down by hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, kind and of then take out you your can... citation book and figure right. out. Yes, yeah. so a lot it does a lot of the work for you, and it sort of accumulates really good authoritative resources, the kind that your teachers are hoping that you're gonna you're gonna find. Okay, so. Notice up here in the corner this Ask Us chat, okay? Mm. So if I click there, I want to, I'm going to just show you this for one second. It's going to pull up a little widget, and this is an opportunity for me to, let's, will it load? Well, okay, let me, let me do this. You can get in touch with a librarian 24 hours a day from this widget. In theory, it should work when you're in the database. But I want to show you at a higher level where this sits um, on the site. Okay, so if you're on the teen site and you go into homework, there, there's an opportunity to chat. If you go to our home page, um, oh, I've got it up. You got it up. Okay. Ask us. You can get to it right from the home page. Okay, so let's click in here. Ask us chat. If I go ahead and put in a question, so I'm Robin, um, put in my email address. The reason I'm putting in my email address is because I'm going to get a transcript back of this oh. conversation that I'm having with this librarian. Can you please point me to the uh, secretary, I'm a terrible typist, <laughs> of a state's website. Okay. And then connect. Okay, I'm going to connect with the librarian right now. So what kind of questions can you ask on the chat? They can be deep level research questions. Hey, I'm working on a National History Day project and I need some primary sources. Um, in terms of math questions, like we're, we definitely get those sort of copy and pasted questions from your homework assignment. And I will say, we're happy to help you with those, absolutely. But we're not, we can't really solve for X for you. Send them over here. You know what you can, I was going to say. You know that's what right, that's right. This show will yes. actually do that. Right. So copy and paste the math questions to us and the mm -hmm. library yeah. research questions we are, too. You unfortunately don't have that 24-7 availability. Right. We and so we'll point, you, we'll point you to great sites like Dr. Yeah. Math, for example. But, you know, um, I, you know, I want you to know, like, what we can do. You can ask for book recommendations on here. You can ask any oh. sort of questions you're curious about. Don't be shy about the types of questions you have. We're always happy to handle them. Wow, and so, you already got a response. So That's here's great. Brooke. Here's my colleague Brooke, who's who's uh, in here asking. You know, she's answering our chat. Would you like the Colorado Secretary of State of or the U.S.? Now this is great. This is a librarian doing what's called clarifying the question, because I asked a question and she's not making any, any assumptions mm -hmm. about what I want. She wants to make sure I get exactly what I want. So I was, I'm thinking I want to tell her. Um, U.S. Secretary of State, because really what I want to get at is, um, you know, the U.S. John Kerry and the, oh my gosh. <laughs> State, please. Okay. So she'll return an answer to me. Um, remember, I gave my, my uh, email address, so mm -hmm. all of this conversation is going to be emailed to me after we're done. And uh, if you go through a really extended conversation where we're pushing all sorts of database links to you and articles, 
Um, so you don't have to sit there and write it all right, down and right. hope you yes, remember it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to be, and those will be all hot linked, hyperlinked, mm -hmm. so that you can get right back to them. That's great. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you, Please. while we're waiting, um, mm -hmm. how does this work? I mean, clearly you're not sitting there right now answering these yeah. questions, and you said 24 7. So right. Where are yeah. all the people like answering the questions and great question. Okay. So when Denver Public Library is open, it's Central Library at 13th and Broadway who are taking turns on the chat uh -huh. and then we have an international consortium of librarians who are answering so for instance on Friday afternoons I'm often answering questions for New York Public Library uh, okay. and in the middle of the night you're gonna get a, a librarian in the UK but they have access to our resources so they can help you with almost any question except for maybe like I have a, ca a specific account question what do I okay. owe on my card but otherwise yeah they can give you lots and lots of help mm -hmm. Okay, so um, s typically these are hyperlinked, so I could just simply click and it would open up a new tab. But there you go. So I got wow. what I wanted. Nice. And then I use my super polite manners because <laughs> this is an actual live person. Thanks for the help. Don't worry about the typing. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So You're then, not sitting there on the other end judging the person. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Incorrect grammar. <laughs> not answering your question. So um, then I can, Brooke is still typing to say thanks to me, but, but I'll exit out. Is there anything else that can help you with? Nope. This was great. And for this one, do you have to be um, a Denver Public Library card holder for this one? You know, no? you don't. We don't ask people to authenticate when they come oh, okay. in here. Yeah, so oh. anyone in theory, we, we get questions from a lot of different people. So you know? free service to the public. Yeah, you know, yeah. Denver Public Library is great about reducing obstacles and barriers for people. It's really important to us. So, Good. all right. I'm going to exit the chat now. There's there's a copy of the transcript that's going to be sent to me, and here's the opportunity for me to send in a survey and tell them how great Brooke was. So now I would like to show you some Google power searching tips. Like I said, librarians are really good at the Google. Um, so here's the example that I've been using this year. Let's assume we're doing some sort of research on Syrian, the Syrian refugee crisis, okay? So let's just type that in to our Google search, okay? Now look at that. I get 19 million results. That's an awful lot of results. So what can I do to make those more precise, maybe make them more authoritative so they're good for as a research, you know, a research tool? And my understanding, if you just type in Syrian refugee crisis from the way Google works, is they're going to pick the most popular ones and the ones that are linked a lot. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for a more academic, it might not be the first one that pops up. That's right. right. How do we get there? Yeah. Nate? Let's, let's figure it out. So the first tip I have, if you put something in quotations in Google and then you search, right? I've gone from 19 million results to 66, 100, 60, uh, 600, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting around all the math teachers, <laughs> uh, close to 700,000 results. What I did was put those quotation marks in, and what I told Google was, I'm only interested in results where that phrase, Syrian refugee crisis, exists in, on the page. I don't care if Syria refugee crisis are in three different mm -hmm. places. It has to be that exact phrase. So that's a way to make your results perhaps more precise. The next thing you can do, if you add in a site, colon, gov, so site, like website, colon, gov, I'm telling Google that I want it to return just results from government websites. So when I do that, now look at that, I've got 1,300 results. How did I do that in a Google search? It's kind of amazing, isn't it? To, wow. to reduce, your, yeah. re reduce your results like that. This would only take me several weeks to go through. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so we've got the, the U.S. State Department, the, uh, the House Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs, the U.S. Congress, Homeland Security, the White House. So these are pretty authoritative uh, resources. Another thing you can do, keep that site colon but change it to edu, now you're looking at just educational websites like the Brookings Institute, um, 
the Bloomberg School of Public Health, the University of South Carolina. So these, you know, you can get at some of those deep research collections around around the world mm -hmm. that way. And then the last thing is, so please. Is, is this what I might I might use like the EDU if I wanted academic research? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just maybe maybe you know that we find that some academic libraries have special collections on a on a topic. Um, oftentimes, you'll find experts on on that topic because mm -hmm. their their whole you know it's a professor somewhere whose research is centered around that topic. So. Um, yeah, another thing you can do, and let me go out to another website. If I just say country code URL, the first, uh, the first result is just this bit media um, page. Okay, so what are these? Every country has an assigned code in their URL for, for searching. So let's say we're looking at this, this, the Syrian refugee crisis and Google says, hey, I see you, you're sitting there at a computer in Denver, so I'm going to return you results as a Denver searcher. But what if I want to trick Google and I want to get more of, say, a Greek perspective, right? Greece has been really impacted by the, by the crisis. So I look and I find out that Greece has a country code URL of GR. So I take that site colon and I add GR now I've returned just sites from Greece. And the thing is, I searched in English, so it returned me English results. They're not really Greek language uh, results, okay. right? So another great way to get at, you know, to kind of get a different perspective when you're doing research on the internet. So that site tag is really, it's really focusing on like something in the domain in, name. That's right, okay. exactly, yeah, yeah. Huh. So yeah, um, let's just, uh, the again the chat please come back and try it out give us give us a holler on the chats on the chat system uh, we just love taking your questions and if you have other questions about the library what else can we do for you that's a great place to uh, to ask yeah I was gonna say just ask on the chat just you, ask on the chat so can <laughs> I don't you, know what else we have to offer. you have all those like quick like search tips and ways to reduce it is there like a like a cheat sheet for that or something? So many. If I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say, I love this stuff that you're doing. Yeah. Right? yeah. There's another I one. Do too. You do, if you do file type colon, mm -hmm. you can do any type of file. So my students use a lot of PNG files. Right. Uh, image files, a certain type of them. Mm -hmm. And you can search that way and only end up with, like if you want, you know, a Coca-Cola can, but only this particular file type. Type in Coca-Cola can, file type colon, dot PNG. You will only return those or, dot P, or just PDF. That's right. Sometimes I only want PDFs to pop up. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, if you type in like Google search tips, there are okay. all these great websites that have compiled 25 yep. Google search tips that will make it probably not as good as a librarian, but you can get close. <laughs> sure. Like. You can and, pretend. You know, this is, a, here's another great tip for you. If you just do a Google search, over here, this, this wheel, under the wheel, you'll see advanced search. If you click there, Google kind of does the work for you and oh, gives yeah. you a lot of different ways that you can filter those results. So that's an easy way to get there, you know, yourself as well. Hmm. Yeah, but it's way quicker to know all those codes. Mm -hmm. Sure. That yeah. I like it's it. fun. Or just to ask a librarian, because I have so the mm -hmm. Denver Public School librarians do mm -hmm. all that stuff for me. Yeah. What other things does a library have to offer, um, not necessarily on the web, but in general for families and kids, and mm -hmm. just if you wanted to go to the library and experience mm -hmm. something? Yeah, programming is a big part of our mission. And so we have things like a lot of your students are going to be familiar with the summer of reading, which is you know birth through 18 mm -hmm. years old. In the winter, we do the winter of reading for adults. And then any branch you go to, any location is going to have story times, um, most of them have a teen advisory board, so you, if you really want to volunteer at the library and be part of the mission of the library and help us determine what, what services are best for teens, you can get involved that way. Several of our central and the Corky Gonzalez branch on Colfax and Irving and now the Montbello branch is about to go live all have maker spaces. Those have full recording studios, so you can sign up for time to re reserve for music recording. Full suites of all the Adobe products, so you can do all mm. sorts of really great digital stuff. Those um, are really expensive. Yeah. For sure, that's mm -hmm. right. And like I said, staff is our most valuable resource, so there's going to be someone there who can guide you through. Yeah. Mm. 
really nice, really nice. Yeah. I have to go to the library more often, I really do. Yeah, we can't wait to see you. Well, you've convinced me, for sure. <laughs> awesome. You really have convinced me. Um, well, thank you for joining us on our show, Robin. We really enjoyed having you share all of this information that you guys probably had no idea about, because I didn't have okay. any idea as well. So, um, And get on that chat. Definitely send your questions into them, um, as well as send your questions to mm -hmm. us. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, and um, go visit Robin at the library. Come see me. Thanks for having me.